Welcome to another inspiring episode of the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Hosts Melanie Johnson and Jen Foster are the owners of Elite Online Publishing. They're both Wall Street Journal, USA Today bestselling authors. We're really glad you're here because this podcast was designed for you. Meet industry experts that share their secrets and strategies. Get successful results for your business in money, relationships, health, and your life. Each episode is going to inspire you to take action towards reaching your greatness. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Elite Expert Insider Podcast. Today, we have an amazing interview for you, someone who is the top at her marketing career, and she is a Wall Street Journal bestselling author. And you wouldn't believe it, but she was actually Miss Michigan as well. So I'm really excited to introduce her. She's also a 16-time international bestselling author. So that means she has 16 books. She is an expert and we're going to really dive into her marketing secrets today. Melanie Johnson, welcome. Thanks, Jen. Nice to see you. My co-owner of Elite Online Publishing. It's always fun. So we're doing like a reverse that you're interviewing me today. I love it. So why don't we start with you telling us a little bit how you got into marketing and a little bit of your background. Yeah. So, you know, I never dreamt that I would be doing what I'm doing today. If someone said, you're going to own a publishing company, I would be like, I don't know anything about publishing back then. Like it wasn't on my list of things. So as you mentioned, I was Miss Michigan. I was a commercial actress. And then from there, I went into being a newscaster. So I got my first job in television in Detroit at Channel 20. And I was a newscaster there and really got my feet wet in television broadcasting, where then I did public relations for them. I produced children's shows from them, other shows that I produced. And then my husband at the time, he got a license for a TV station in Houston and it didn't have anything but the license, a piece of paper. So that was just such a unique experience, building a TV station from the ground up. People say, was that hard? I'm like, you know, it was the most fun, exhilarating and challenging and difficult thing I'd ever done. All rolled into one. I mean, we had to get an office building that had to be remodeled. I was having to get construction, wallpaper, flooring, building a newsroom. We were 100% news, kind of like CNN, but local. So had to build a whole newsroom out, get all the staff for the news team and the reporters and the equipment. And oh, and then no one knew who we were. So we had to figure out, tell people who we are and you should watch us and what's our marketing campaign. And I always think it's fun. We had a friend of ours who owned uh, Love Advertising and just love her, Brenda Love, became friends with her. She was one of the first people to buy ad time on our TV station. And she had this shtick that she would do with one of the other people that she worked with where they were like Texas women from East Texas. And they had this old whole stick and she had me in tears when they did this at a dinner party at my house. So I created an ad for the TV station out of it and we won awards for it. So you just never know where ideas are going to come from. And so at the TV station, I was vice president there. I produced the morning show. I was a news anchor there. I even had my face on the front page of the newspaper as one of the most popular news anchors. So met a lot of celebrities with our morning show. And then from there, we got another TV station in Dallas that did mostly infomercials. Our station then changed to doing all news into doing more of syndicated programming, but we had the Houston Rockets and the Astros on our TV station. And then during that time, my husband and I decided to build, well, we built a house, but it was a remodel. The house started out as 7,000 square feet. It turned into 25,000 square feet. And and then we had adopted two boys. So I kind of transitioned to really taking over the construction of the house and being a mom to the two boys, but I still had my feet in the TV station. And then we built another house, a 13,000 square foot house up in Northern Michigan for our summer home. So two monumental projects. And then life kind of changed as it does. Um, My husband and I separated, we're getting a divorce. And then the economy fell out in 2008. Right. A lot of people lost their homes during that time. Oh yeah. The home market just crashed and we were trying to sell our home because we had just gotten divorced and no one wanted to buy it. And then he declared bankruptcy, which was really difficult through our whole divorce into a tailspin. No money was coming in. He was buying me out of the TV stations and our settlement. So it wasn't like I had this huge chunk of money. I was expecting income every month that stopped and Airbnb didn't exist. 
BRBO just started and a friend of mine in Northern Michigan was renting their house on VRBO and normally just realtors would rent houses. So Mm -hmm. I decided to try it, put it up there. The realtors told me I would never rent my house. It was too big. I was asking too much money. So one realtor rented it for one week that summer and I sold out the entire rest of the summer all on VRBO, created the house, its own website. So then I thought, I wonder if this would work in Texas. So I looked in Houston, there was really nothing listed except for apartments and small places. So here I put this giant 25,000 square foot mansion up on VRBO. And can I tell you, I started renting the house. And then from there, people were renting it for events. I was doing weddings there. I was doing photo shoots there. So basically the kids and I, made a living. I paid for all my expenses and could live on the rental was over six figures that I was making between the two houses. I could pay the electric bill. I could pay the gas bill and the water bill (laughs) because the judge at bankruptcy, which I wasn't in bankruptcy, just my former husband was, they were saying, well, you're probably gonna have to move out in three weeks, six weeks, and a whole series of miracles that God put into place. I kept that house, both houses for almost five years. Wow. And was making money with it in the meantime. Whether I love was- that you had that entrepreneurial spirit where you were just like, how can I do this? How can mm-hmm. I make money doing this? And just going out on a limb because like back then VRBO was new and only realtors mm-hmm. rented out properties. So I think that's great how you did that. Yeah. And just reinvented. Like, it's like, I say it's like having a Rubik's cube and you kind of turn it around. So you find something that's going to work that how can I make money? And really it was the grace of God that gave me these ideas and connections that put it all together and that it worked and it worked really well. And then finally the houses were going to go back to the bank. But during that time, right before that, I started dabbling in real estate redevelopment here in Houston, even though the market was bad, oil was going crazy. So I bought some land, partnered up with a group and started tearing down old homes and putting three or four or six townhouses there and was doing that for a while. And then the partners I had turned out not to be the most honest people in the world. And then the market tanked. Um, oil started to go down. And so I really sold out of everything except for one piece of property. But right after I want to back up right when I got divorced, I thought that really television was not the future. I thought being online was the future in 2008. So I started Imagine Now Network which was going to be like a mini television station online. And I was going to do infomercials there, things from YouTube there, do a variety of different things. But then when he filed for bankruptcy, I had to put that on hold. But I always felt that was the future. So I started diving into finding places that were teaching that because it's all about learning skills. Mm -hmm. So even I went to the Small Business Association here in Houston. I learned how to create a website and I created the Houston Mansion website and Walloon Lake House website, which also helped give me creative credibility. Then we went to where I met you was an event that they were teaching how to publish a book, how to do digital marketing, which was all new to me. I felt like I was a sponge just soaking it all up. Yeah. Published my first book, met you there. We did a book writing Mm -hmm. retreat, which we thought was going to be like this one-off thing that we would do. And it was just amazing. Afterwards, people were contacting me and saying, I didn't know you published books. Oh my gosh, you published two books for people and they became bestsellers. And can I go to lunch with you? And so you and I decided, hey, we're getting leads from this. Maybe we should start a business. And it was really both of our side hustles at the time. But then that side hustle became our great. Right. Yeah. I've done a couple books and um, for myself and then a couple books for some web design clients. And then it was like, oh yeah, this book writing retreat really boosted our publishing company. Yeah. And we did the retreat at a villa that I have down in the Dominican Republic. And I had turned that in again, it's how do you look at it that I want, I knew I could resell it on Airbnb and VRBO, but the market was flooded with other people doing the same thing. So I came up with a concept that I would give it to charities to put in their charity auction and raise money. And then I had a minimum on it, which would pay all my expenses and everything. And then I raised over 600,000 for charity doing that. So again, it's looking at things differently, not doing it the same way that everybody else is doing it. Mm -hmm. And I really feel that's what we do with our publishing company too. We try to do it different and be innovative and market people's brand and their book differently than other publishing companies are doing. Right. Well, what I hear from your stories is you really thought outside the box from the beginning. 
So even before mm -hmm. you started your TV stations, you know, thinking outside the box because you started from scratch that TV station and turned it into a news company and then turned it into a, a TV station and then bought another one and did the same. And from there, every single thing you did was outside the box, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're in that time, even just the real estate that you did and building those two houses, you have to have a lot of management and a lot of marketing for those. And then marketing for the marketing and networking, I should say, because you got to have a lot of a really good team, right? For to building a house right? Um, and knowing where to go and where to shop. And then for the Airbnbs or the VRBO at then, because you didn't Airbnb it, it was VRBO, you know, really knowing how to market that and then I really love how when it came time to market your charity auctions, you were, how can I use this time? It was, what is it? A, a villa, right? You had a villa mm -hmm. and it yep. wasn't a timeshare, right? Cause you could sell as many weeks as you wanted. Right. Uh -huh. Right. So your villa, you could sell. And instead of just being like, oh, everyone else is doing it this way. You said, how can I get people in this villa? Oh, well, charities, mm -hmm. people buy live charity auctions, right? So they're buying a week at your charity auction. I think that's awesome. So you've raised over $600,000 for charities. I think that's amazing. It is kind of thinking outside the box. So I want to tell business owners today, how can you think outside the box for your business? What is working? What's not working? And really it's trying things. And I want to talk about speed as well. So you can think about trying things or you can just jump in and do them. And sometimes it's the speed that's successful. When Jen, when you and I started our business, one of the first things we did was do a podcast mm -hmm. and we created a YouTube channel. And I remember going to a convention called VidCon and they asked everyone who has a podcast here. And it was a room of over a hundred people in this one particular classroom. And there were only two people that raised their hand and I was one of them. Wow. And then they said, who has a YouTube channel? And I raised my hand and there was like 10 of us. And I thought, oh my gosh, we are like doing it. And we didn't care if we were perfect or not. We yeah. just jumped in fearless and did it. So I yeah. think it's important to be fearless, jump in and do it. Don't think that it has to be too perfect. Just mm -hmm. do it and you get better as you go. Today, I was sharing with you, I'm monkeying around with this new app that does videos for you with using AI. And the first one I did, I'm like, oh, this is really clunky. I'm so clunky. I don't have it done. And then I did two more. I didn't post them, but I was like, oh, it's getting better. It's like you're using that muscle and you're developing the muscle and it gets better and better. And you can figure out what was good, what was bad. So speed to market is really important. We even say that with a book, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it out there. You can always go back and edit. Of course, you want to have a high quality book and you want to have great content, but people get wrapped up in this perfection and then years go by and they didn't do anything and they're missing all of that business, whether it's with a social media post, writing your book, telling your story, um, putting an advertisement out there, just go do it, you know, and there's so many free things that you can do as well. So if you're afraid and you don't want to lose money, start with the free things, tons, everything on social media is free. Yeah. I love that you and I took that action and that speed to do a podcast, even though we weren't quite sure, you know, if this was going to go over well, but we did, we did the podcast, started the podcast before we did the book writing retreat. So hot chicks, write Hot books podcast is what it was yeah. called when we interviewed authors. And then that evolved actually into this podcast, which is Elite Expert Insider. And we've been doing this podcast now for seven years. So one year of, of hot chooks, right? Hot books on the beach. <laughs> and then seven years of Elite Expert Insider, which is really awesome. And, you know, they say most podcasters, they do one or two episodes and they just find it's too much work and they don't do it. But we created a team, right? We created a system to getting it done. And then we had a team behind it that gets it done and it makes it easy for us. And, you know, Jen and I have published over 3000 books and how did we do that? So we created a system. We're like, okay, we need an assembly line. If we're going to create all these books, what's the beginning, middle and end of this assembly line to make the whole process work. So if you're overwhelmed by your business or your social media, remember it's processes. So if you're wanting to post, maybe you need somebody to help you. It's not just you as your team, but there's so many great AI tools now that makes it easier. So this one tool I was using today, it was called Super Creator. You 
can take an article. So I took one of our blog posts that we've done. I put it into the app. The app changes it into video text, and then it comes up on the screen so you can even read it. And then it does the captions, the subtitles, the background for you. I'm like, wow. oh my gosh, this is a game changer. So how much time does that save me? Even brain power, like I'm doing it, you know, of having to think and doing it. So there's so many tools that you can use. It's finding the right tools, the right people to streamline your process. And another thing that we learn is when we're doing something, do we have a process for it? We always ask the question, oh, we need to do that. Do we have a process for that? No, well, we need to make a process, document that, write it down, have steps. So yeah, in your business processes. Yes. And one thing I think that has helped you to become successful, which I think all entrepreneurs need to do besides thinking outside the box, mm -hmm. is that you're constantly learning and you're constantly right. taking action on the things you learn. So, you know, right. even today we've been learning new sales techniques, learning new marketing techniques. Here we have a new app, new AI, new things that we're doing because your business has to always evolve and change. Mm. And that's what we've been talking about. We did a Facebook streaming live event today, mm -hmm. uh, as we are also recording this. And, you know, we talked about in the live that things change all the time and you have to be innovative and move with the times, you know, Amazon's mm -hmm. going to change. Facebook is going to change. You know, it used to be Facebook <clears throat> Creator Studio that you would post things, but now it's Meta Business Suite. They changed it on you, mm -hmm. right? So things are going to change and you have to evolve and pivot. And I love that you are a learner and an action taker. <clears throat> Thank you. And we were talking about fear earlier and we've had our ones where we were, we got fearful. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a web. I remember our first webinar and we're like, okay, we're following. We had a course that we took and we're following the step-by-step. -step, and then we realized that didn't really have all the things we were supposed to do <laughs> in it. We felt like there were a lot of holes in there. But we went and did it anyways. And then our technology went out in the middle of it. So right. then we had to scramble and get back up and we didn't sell anything. And mm -hmm. we're like, oh my gosh, that was just horrible. And then we didn't do it for a long time. So that, that didn't work. The tech was bad. But we kind of said, we're just going to go and do different things. And then this last year or so, we have really stepped up and committed to doing live streams and making an offer and having a landing page. And even though it wasn't perfect the first time we did it, we actually sold six things. We're like, oh, it worked. Oh my gosh, it actually worked. We gave great value. We gave great content and people wanted to buy what we were offering them. And so then we've gotten traction and gotten better each time that we've done it and you get more confidence. So the lesson is just go do it, get more confidence, repeat, even if you do it and you don't share it with anyone, but you just keep doing it and getting better at it and then going out there and, and just doing it. I love that. Well, Melanie, tell people where they can go to find you and to hire you for their marketing or for their book publishing. Sure. Go to Elite Online Publishing. Hit the author submission button there. But if you're looking for just marketing for your company, we do that as well. And we do rebranding for you. And if you want to become a number one bestselling author, we guarantee all our authors will hit number one bestseller. We do Wall Street Journal and International Amazon bestseller as well. And we can help you write your book from just an idea all the way to the very end to the bestseller line. Awesome. Thanks, Melanie, for being here. And we actually just added a new service. If you have an audiobook or you want to publish your audiobook with us, we also can get you a New York Times bestselling audiobook. So if you want to pay to play, we can help you do that as well. Thanks for listening and have a great day and check out all of our episodes at Elite Expert Insider. Hey, are you looking to increase your revenue, build credibility and elevate your brand? This podcast is brought to you by Elite Online Publishing an innovative publishing and full spectrum marketing company. They will publish and market your book to make it a number one bestseller. Becoming an author is the best way to market your business. So contact them at eliteonlinepublishing.com today. All of their authors become number one bestsellers.